Hello, in this video I'm going to take you through the construction of ionic formulas with the correct subscripts using the correct formulas for the ions both in charge and in the you know elements especially when we look at polyatomic ions now this is a brief video I'll show you a couple of examples usually in a class you would do a lot of um, you know a worksheet or break out and work on a whole bunch of problems this part of the video is brief but this part of the class is uh, a little bit longer you need to practice more to gain skills all right so first of all formulas are always neutral this is the basic theory that opposites attract you're going to have your metal which is the positive or the cation you're going to have your non-metal which is the negative or anion okay and these two are going to come together to create your ionic bond and you're going to have equal amounts of positive and negative in the ionic compounds and that's what makes them stable all right so let's take a look at sodium plus and Cl minus. We call these sodium ions and chloride respectively. Sodium has a plus one charge. Chlorine has a minus one charge. And so when you stick them together, you have NaCl, which is the formula. Because you have a plus one charge and you have a minus one charge, overall it's zero. We don't write Na1Cl1 because the ones are implied. We never write the ones in chemistry. Let's talk about lithium oxide. So ideally you would have already watched my video on the names of the ions and the charges, but let me just show you really quick how the charges work here. So lithium is plus one in charge and oxygen is minus two in charge. And what we've got is lithium has a plus one charge, oxygen or oxide has a negative two charge. And so lithium plus and lithium plus is what you need because you're gonna have uh, two pluses there total and oxygen is minus two so you're going to have a minus two total so the plus two and minus two makes it be electrically neutral and we write the formula Li2O the two here is telling us how many lithium atoms we have not the number of oxygens and notice how the, the two is subscript it's a little bit lower down on the page okay so one way to figure out the formula pretty easily is to use the crisscrossing procedure. So you take Li plus and O2 negative. And again, we don't write the ones in chemistry. We just write Li plus. So to do the crisscrossing procedure, you have to uh, do some scratch work to write the one. And then what you want to do is move only the magnitude of the charge. So I know we've got the plus and the negative sign there, but just move the numbers only, the one or the two only. So the one from the lithium is going to come down to make a subscript for the oxygen. And the two for the oxygen is going to make a subscript for the lithium. Okay. And so when we clean this up, we don't write the ones in chemistry. It's going to be Li2O, which is what we just had previously. You are never going to have pluses or minuses in an ionic uh, compound okay so Li2O yes there are charges in there but they're not written because the overall thing is neutral all right let's visualize this another way we've got Li2O as I mentioned lithium has a plus one charge so let's just graph the charge here oxygen has a minus two charge okay so let's graph that charge so lithium is a plus one and we've got two of them for a total of plus two charge nice little bar graph Oxygen has a minus two charge, and you can see the magnitude of the charges are equal. There's a total of plus two, there's a total of minus two, so they cancel out, and that's why the formula is Li2O, not LiO3 or some other number, okay? So let's go through some examples. We've got aluminum oxide. So first you wanna figure out what is aluminum? So that's Al. You want to find out which group it is located in. Group three is plus three. So we write Al plus three. All right. Uh, hopefully you have already watched my video uh, outlining the periodic table and the charges of ions as they appear in the different group numbers. Now we have oxygen. Oh, well, first of all, we have oxide. Okay, oxide is the name of an ion which stands for O, and it's located in group six, which is minus two, and so we write its formula O2 minus, all right? 
uh, this should say group six here in uh, black font there above the group number. Crisscrossing procedure is best done with aluminum oxide because it's pretty complicated. We've got a three here and a two there. So write down ALO, leave a little bit of space. Take the three from the aluminum to create the subscript for the oxygen. Take the two from the charge of oxide to create a subscript for the aluminum. And we really can't clean that up any, anymore because we don't have any ones to erase with our pencil. So Al2O3 is the chemical formula for aluminum oxide. So practice this with some group one elements, group two elements, group three elements, uh, different halogens, different, um, you know, oxide sulfide, you know, you'll have different numbers there, a one, a two, a three, and practice with it. All right, let me show you how polyatomic ions work. This is probably the more complicated part. So let's say we have um, these polyatomic ions like nitrate or hydroxide or sulfate, for example. What do we do? Well, first of all, you want to keep all the atoms together. Nitrate is NO3 negative. Keep the NO3 as a group. Sulfate is SO4 2 negative. Keep the SO4, all those atoms together in a group, all right? And you want to use parentheses when you have more than one. And this is when you're going to have parentheses in a formula. So let's think about magnesium nitrate. So what do we do? How do we solve this? Well, first of all, you want to think about magnesium. Which group is it located in? It's in group two, so we know it has a charge of plus two. And let's go ahead and write the formula of that ion out. It's Mg2+. Whether we write Mg plus 2 or Mg2 plus doesn't matter. It has the same meaning. Nitrate. What the heck is that? Well, you want to memorize that nitrate is NO3, that grouping, with a negative 1 charge or a minus. And just memorize the suggested list of polyatomic ions that I gave you in my previous video. Next, what you want to do is use a crisscrossing procedure. Let me show you how this works. So you want to write out the elements there, Mg on the left, and then that grouping, NO3, on the right, all right? And you want to take the two from the magnesium charge to bring it down to produce a subscript for the nitrate, okay? Wait a minute, 32 oxygens, that's a huge number. That doesn't make sense. So this is where we have to use parentheses, okay? Let's do this again. Put parentheses around your polyatomic ion if you know you're going to have more than two, uh, more than one, okay? Now bring the two down, and that two is outside the parentheses. It means you have two of those tricycles. Let's call them tricycles, all right? Now what you want to do is the same thing for uh, the nitrate, okay? The nitrate has a minus one charge. I've written the one there, so we could use it as a uh, tool. Okay, so the one is going to come down and create a subscript for uh, the magnesium. Now, be careful to bring the charge down, which is the one, not the three, which is the number of oxygen atoms there, okay? So we're going to put a one there. And uh, then you want to clean up the structure. Remember, we never show the ones in chemistry, so it's just going to be Mg parentheses NO3 2. Okay, let's do another one, sodium sulfate. So first step you want to do Na, okay? We memorize sodium, or you look on the periodic table, sodium is Na. Which group is that located in? That's located in group one, so it's plus one. Let's write the formula of that ion now, Na plus. We don't write the ones in chemistry, so I'm just writing Na plus. Later we'll put a one in there. Next up we have sulfate. What is sulfate? Sulfate is SO42 negative. Again, just make a list of suggested polyatomic ions that your professor wants you to memorize or that he gives you or she tells you um, this is the reference sheet. All right. Next, what we want to do is a crisscrossing procedure. So we've got Na plus and sulfate. Write the one for the sodium so we can use that as some scratch work. Okay. We're going to take the one from the sodium and bring it down and create a subscript for the sulfate. So what's going to happen here? Well, good news. We don't show the ones, so we don't even need to use parentheses. We don't need to put a one there. We don't even need to worry about it. You just leave it off because the fact that we have SO4 written there means that we have one of those. 
Now we take the two for the sulfate charge. The two is the charge. We bring it down to create a subscript for the sodium. And so again, that's the structure. There's no parentheses needed. We uh, have two sodium ions in that formula and we have one sulfate ion in that formula. And we don't need to write a one for the sulfate because it's implied, because it's there in the formula. Anyways, this is a brief tutorial of how to construct maybe two or three. I suggest working on a worksheet or other problems that your professor or teacher has assigned for you. Thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Have a great day, everybody.